Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and welcome back to another episode on working with Twine. Now, at this point, you have an idea about formatting text. We'll cover more text formatting options in later videos, but at this point, we're going to return back to passages. Of course, before we start, if you are finding these videos useful, feel free to hit that subscribe button and make sure to activate notifications. That way you'll be notified of every new Twine video that I produce. Back to passages. As you've learned, passages can represent lots of different things. You can use them to represent rooms, dialogue, thoughts, any piece of text that occurs in your story. They can also represent code blocks. If you know any programming languages, you can think of them as functions, but don't worry if you have no programming experience at all. You'll learn what this means soon enough. Passages have a few properties. First, they have a name, and that name is case sensitive. So these different case names of the same passage equates to three different passages. Passages also contain a description where your text or code goes. Finally, passages contain tags. Tags are little pieces of metadata that you give your passage and later you can access them in code. For example, you might have a passage that requires some puzzle solving, so you can tag it as a puzzle. Or it might be a passage related to an NPC, so you might tag it as an NPC or the NPC's name. A complex use case would be to create an intricate dialogue tree. You can tag some passages as questions, others as statements, others even as interjections, and then dynamically retrieve them in code. We'll play around with tags and coding later down the road. The Harlow story format does contain several built-in tags. The startup tag indicates the passage will be processed at startup, and this will only be processed once. This is useful for code, but you can also place text here if you only want it to show it once to the user. The header tag is processed at the start of every passage, and the footer tag is processed at the end of every passage. Here you can add custom text, but you can also have code run in these as well. Finally, there are debug variants, which helps for testing your story. We'll go into testing and debugging in a later video. With all that said, let's start building the layout of our story using passages. Okay, here's our story when we last left off. Let's create a new passage called start. So click the plus passage button here. I'll move my passage over here, open this up, and we'll call this start. Now let's add some text. We'll just add, this is the start passage. Now this is the point where we'll add a tag. So click the plus sign and give it the name startup. Now click the add button here. So we have our start passage with the startup tag already added. Close this out. And right here, this is missing a start here. So let's add our start story here. So this will begin here. Now click the play button. And you'll see here that there, this is the start passage. Notice that it, it collides with this sentence here. We didn't add any text. Now, if you click on the tree, that text is gone. You click back on the dusty road. It doesn't show up again. Let's close this. And this time, we want to add a header. So click on the start here. And what we can do here is we're going to remove the startup. And now we're going to add header. Click the add, close this, start up the story, and you'll see this is the start passage. And if you click on tree, you can see this is the start passage. So this is playing with every passage. We can also add it as the footer. So you can add another tag and just type footer as well. Now we have two tags to this one passage. Let's play the story. And you'll see this is the start passage, and then this is the start passage. You click tree, you'll see it's here as well as here. Later in this tutorial series, we'll take advantage of all these tags to run our code. Okay, so let's close this. And what I'm going to do is let's delete this start passage here. So we'll click the trash can and then click delete. Okay, now we're going to create the passages for our story, and there's going to be a lot of them. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the passage and I'm going to add the text there as well. What you can do is pause the video at each passage so that you can follow along. Okay, we're going to start with the road passage here. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to replace and I'm going to replace this text with some new text. Here's our new text. It creates three new passages. So I'm going to close this and look at that. Now we have this tree here. Select the tree and delete it. Okay, so now we have three passages. A good thing to do is to add some organization. If we didn't apply some organization and we started adding more and more passages, it would be really hard to figure out the connections between them. So what we're going to do is organize them like a map. We're just going to do that for this story. For your own stories, you can organize it however you want. It's whatever makes the most sense to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this side road to the northeast. So it's going like this. We're going to move the back road to the southwest. And the dusty road will go to the southeast. So this is our locations now. And if we open up the road, you can see that they match what's in the text. A side road branches off to the northeast. A sign reads waterfront. Finally, a, the back road goes to the southwest. So this is a visual indicator of our locations. OK, we're going to start with the side road, and let's add some text to it. OK, so now we have two passages, one called Camp Entrance, the other is Waterfront. The Camp Entrance passage is actually this road passage over here. What I'm going to do is select this and delete it. Now, you'll notice this X here. This indicates we're linking to an orphaned passage. Let's go back to our road and change it to Camp Entrance. Now, if we close this, everything is properly linked. OK, let's move the waterfront to the southeast. Now let's add some text. OK, the lakeside road is going to the southeast. And the location of the camp path is fine. We'll get to this later. Now, as we're building this out, we're going to be expanding these further and further apart, just again, so the organization is clear. OK, let's go back to our lakeside road and add some text. OK, so we have our craft station. Let's move this to the south, and we'll add more text. OK, we're going to move the intersection to the southwest, and we'll add some more text. OK, the parade ground goes to the west, and you'll see that this connection goes back to our dusty road. Now for the parade grounds text. OK, the store is going to go to the southeast, and the mess hall is going to go to the west. Now for the store. OK, for our mess hall, add the following. And we're going to move the soccer field to the west. And you'll notice that this connection here is a one way. This means the player won't be able to go back. 
they're only able to go west. Okay, we're just going to move this to the northwest. And you'll see that we have a full circuit here. Let's add some text to the back road. Okay, now we're defining the center of the camp. And that's where the Hopi campground comes in. And I'm just going to organize this a little bit. Move this here. OK, let's add some text for the Hopi campground. You'll see that the Hopi campground connects to the dusty road. Now let's add the description to the dusty road. Okay, we made a new campsite. Let's move this over here. And the tombstone campground will connect to the camp path. Now we have our last location. Add the following to the camp path. OK, we have all of our locations built. Players will wander around the campground looking for items, but Bernie will be also wandering around it as well. Remember, the mess hall here is a one-way location, so once players leave the parade ground, they're going to have to go to the soccer field. There's no going back. Also, this camp path is a special traversal. The camp path is shrouded in darkness, so the only way to enter the camp path is to have a flashlight. And you can see the text even mentions it. Even with the flashlight, the winding path through the forest is impossible. OK, so let's run the story. And now we have a story with lots of locations. And you can explore around here and go down paths, go down to the back road. You can see here uh, continues to a wooden building to the southeast. It's a lot large soccer field. You can see you can't get into the mess hall from here. We're going to go up the gravel road, cross to the campground, which is the Hopi campground. And we'll take the back road to the west. Oh, wait, that's exactly where I went from. <laughs> so we'll take the small path. And you can see now we can take another clusters of tents. And we can continue onwards. And now we're at the intersection. So feel free to play around with the text. Uh, this is just something I came up with off the top of my head. So I'm going to close this. And here's our passages again. So one thing to keep in mind is that passages don't have to represent one location. They can represent anything. For instance, a waterfront may have lots of smaller locations in it, such as a dock, a lifeguard, or even a boathouse. And you can add even more passages, say, to reflect that the character is looking at something or a sentence of dialogue. So don't feel constrained to using one location for one passage. That's just how we're doing it in this tutorial. OK, so now we have our structure, but it doesn't do anything. We have no objects to pick up, no way to track inventory, no way to determine where Bernie is located. For that, you need to do some coding. And you'll get started with it in the next episode. Now, don't break into a cold sweat. I'll be walking you through it each step of the way. OK, if you found this episode helpful, make sure to click that Like button. Also, feel free to subscribe for more Twine episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.